Good morning, everyone. I really hope that you've been enjoying our sessions so far. And this session, Saving versus Investing, Why the Difference Matters and How to Strike a Balance is going to be another heavy hitter. And this session will be presented by Mr. Lawrence Blackman, and he's the CEO of the consulting firm Blackman & Blackman, which specializes in financial, bookkeeping, real estate, and management services. Lawrence holds a bachelor's degree in economics and business from Linfield University, graduating with summa cum laude, and he is a former banker with over 25 years of progressive experience, in, experience sorry, managing the retail and commercial lending process. Lawrence has also lectured at the UB5 Islands campus, and he's passionate about financial literacy and promoting education and financial wellness. Lawrence, take it away. Thank you, Megan. Good morning, everybody. Today, we're gonna to be talking about saving versus investing, why the difference matters and how to strike a balance. Let me just get straight into it. Savings versus investment. What's the difference? Saving and investing are two valuable important financial concepts that are often used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. Understanding the difference between these two concepts is important if you want to manage your finances effectively and achieve your financial goals. But before we do that, let's talk about what wealth is. Wealth is the abundance of valuable financial assets or physical possessions that can be converted into a form that can be used for transactions. Economists make the distinction between money, that's in the form of currency, demand deposits and other things, that we use to make purchases, and wealth, which is a total collection of pieces of property that serve to store value. Wealth includes not only money, but also other assets such as bonds, common stock, art, land, furniture, cars, and houses. Now let's talk about savings. Savings refers to setting aside a portion of your income for future use. It is the act of putting money into a savings account, a piggy bank, onto the bed, or other types of saving vehicles. Savings is a good financial habit that helps you to build an emergency fund, plan for big ticket purchases, or save for retirement. So let's talk about the benefits of saving. We spoke about building an emergency fund. We're told that we should have at least six months of expenses set aside for an emergency fund. You never know what can happen. As you know, we've just come through a pandemic. And um, the truth is, a lot of us never expected some of the things that happened then. You know, you would have had job losses or severe um, illnesses in some cases. So you never know when you will actually need an emergency fund. So it's always important to have that in place. You also may use savings to plan for big ticket purchases. You may want to save for a down payment on a home or a car, or you may decide that you want to replace um, some appliances in your home or purchase them. And then for those of us, saving for retirement is a big issue as well. Um, a lot of us realize that, um, you know, retirement can be expensive. You want to be carrying on in a manner that you've grown accustomed to. So you want to be sure that you have enough set aside for retirement, knowing, of course, that Social Security alone is not going to be sufficient to do that. You can provide for your financial security. The truth is um, you want to live in a manner that you've grown accustomed to. So you want to have funds set aside so that they can provide that level of comfort to you. So let's talk about how to save. And for this, we use a powerful tool. It's called budgeting. What is a budget? Essentially, it's a financial roadmap. It looks at your income and your spending to determine the best way to reach your financial goals. So what are the three components of a good budget? You need to look at your income. You need to look at your expenses, your fixed expenses, your variable expenses, your one-time expenses. But let's talk about that. What exactly is that? Your fixed expenses are things like rent, um, your car payments, stuff that you can't necessarily change. And your variable expenses are things like utilities, stuff that you can afford uh, that you can change on a, on a basis, food, your food bill, that sort of thing. And one-time expenses may turn out to be things like medical expenses, stuff that you do not expect to happen, but happens anyway. And at the end of it, after you've taken away your income and your expenses, you're left with a surplus or a deficit. It goes without saying that 
If you're in a deficit position, you're broke. And that emergency measures need to be taken quickly, either to you in increase your income or find ways to reduce your expenses. I remember as a child, our parents used to say to us, lock off the light. So there's a one way, that's one way in which you can always adjust your variable expenses. You always want to look at things like utilities and the like. So let's talk about the types of budgets. There's several. As a matter of fact, they're way more than I've listed here, um, but I'm just going to talk about several of them. Zero-based budget, the pay-yourself-first budget, the envelope method budget, the 50-30-20 rule, and the no budget. So the zero-based budget is a concept where it's simple. It's income minus expenses equals zero. This budgeting method is best for people who have a set income each month and reasonably estimate their monthly income. After calculating your monthly income, add up your monthly spending and savings to equal that income amount. It's important to plan out all your expenses as accurately as possible. If you go over one spending category, you'll need to take cash from another category to make up for it. And if you forget a large expense, you could throw your entire budget off. Let's talk about the pay yourself first budget. The pay yourself first budget is another simple budgeting method that focuses primarily on savings and debt repayment. Set aside a specific amount every time you get paid for savings and debt payments. Then spend the rest of your money however you see fit. By doing this, you can prioritize your savings and debt repayment goals and make do with whatever is left over. So this is really for somebody who has a very aggressive or a very focused plan for savings and debt repayment. For example, you want to focus on paying high interest debt while slowly building up an emergency fund. As you get rid of high interest debt, you can focus on other savings goals. It's important to prioritize your necessary expenses and bills, but if you don't have to watch where you spend your discretionary income because you've already taken care of what's most important. Right? Let's talk about the envelope method. This is for people who are more visually oriented, people who want to see it. Um, this budgeting method is similar to the zero-based budget, but with one big difference. You do it all with cash. In an envelope budgeting system, you plan out how you're going to spend your money each month and use an envelope for each spending category. Then you withdraw as much cash as you need to fill each envelope based on your budget. As you go grocery shopping, for instance, take your grocery envelope and pay for your items with cash. If you run out, that's all you can spend on that category for the month unless you take cash from other envelopes. Avoid raiding other envelopes too often though, because again, that can cause a snowball effect and mess up your, your budgeting for that. Let's talk about the 50, 30, 20 budget. The 50, 20, sorry, the 50, 30, 20 budgeting method is straightforward and requires less work than the zero base or the envelope budgets. The idea is to break down your expenses into three categories. The necessary expenses, which are 50%, discretionary expenses, which are 30%, and your savings and debt, um, debt payments, which are 20%. This budgeting method is a great option for new budgeters because it doesn't require meticulous tracking of all your expenses. You can succeed with this budget as long as you know what counts as a want versus a need and put enough money towards saving and debt. And then we have the no budget. As the name suggests, this different budgeting method consists entirely of not spending money that you don't have. Rather than create a budget, you keep an eye on your checking account balance. Use a budgeting app or your bank's online banking or mobile app to help you track this. Know when recurring bills hit your account. One way you can do this is to keep a list handy in a spreadsheet or Microsoft Word document or even on a piece of paper. Set aside cash for savings and extra debt payments. When you can, use automatic transfers from check-in to savings and increase your automatic monthly debt payments. Spend what's left over without withdrawing your account. Again, by keeping an eye on your account balance, you're better able to know how much money is available after these core expenses. While the no budget sounds easier than other methods we've listed, it's not always easy to tell yourself no. So we've spoken about the budgets. So let's talk about what the strategies really are and really and truly what you need to do are these four things. You need to assess, you need to plan, implement and review. Assess where you are now. That is, what is my real take-home income? And what are my true expenses? A lot of us have an idea as to what we think our expenses are. But when we actually look at them in reality, when we look at what we spent over the month, we realize that we may have something a little off. You need to plan or create the budget that is realistic, that it bears in mind or keeps, keeps a firm look at what it is that you're really doing at this current point. And put it into place. That is, you need to document it. You need to write it down. If you don't write it down, you can't assess how you've been doing. 
And then you need to review your transactions at the end of the month to ensure that you're following the plan and whether adjustments need to be made. A lot of times we think that, you know, we're only spending $500 in food, but when we looked at it and we thought it up, what we've actually spent at the grocery store and all the takeout and so on, we realized that that figure is actually higher than we thought. So either we need to consciously adjust that or we need to adjust our budget to take into account the reality of our situation. For smartphone users, this could be as simple as downloading personal finance app. Some of them are free and able to interface with your bank's online banking platform. A number of the local banks have um, basic um, um, programs that allow you to have an insight into what it is that you're spending your money on. So take advantage of those when able. Well, let's talk about investing. Investing, on the other hand, refers to putting your money to work to generate a return. It involves purchasing assets that have the potential to appreciate in value over time, such as stocks, bonds, and real estate. Investing can help you build wealth and achieve your long-term financial goals. What is investment? An investment is essentially an asset that is created with the intention of allowing money to grow. The wealth created can be used for a variety of objectives, such as meeting shortages of income, saving up for retirement, or fulfilling certain obligations, such as repayment of loans, payment of tuition fees, or purchase of other assets. Investments may generate income for you in two ways. One, if you invest in a sizable asset or saleable asset, you may earn income by way of profit. Second, if investment is made in a return generating plan, then you will earn an income by accumulation of gains. In this sense, what is an investment can be understood by saying that investments are all about putting your savings into assets or objects that become worth more than their initial worth and those that will help produce an income with time. Financially speaking, an investment definition is an asset that is obtained with the intention of allowing it to appreciate in value over time. So let's talk about the differences between savings and investment. And we have a graphic here. Um, we realize that savings involves putting money aside in a safe liquid account. Those accounts include checking accounts, savings accounts in the United States, treasury bills, and money market accounts. And it provides capital for investing. Investing, on the other hand, involves buying an asset in hopes of earning a return. Hope is really important here because we are hoping to, but there is an element of risk. It includes stocks, bonds, and real estate, and it can increase your capital. So let's talk about the types of investment. The question, what is investment, is mostly followed by understanding your investment objectives and identifying where to invest. Setting aside investments in real estate and assets such as jewelry, art, and such, when it comes to different instruments, another aspect of understanding what is investment is to know about the different types of investment. The first refers to equity investments, and the second category includes debt instruments. If your investment objectives match, equity investments can offer greater returns and carry relatively higher risk, while debt instruments are less risky but offer relatively low returns. So how should you invest? Now that you know what an investment and how it can help you create wealth, the next thing is to understand how to invest. Here are a few vital points you must keep in mind before you decide to invest. You need to analyze your financial needs. Firstly, analyze your financial position concerning risk tolerance, investment objectives, and other factors like your family size, the number of earning members in your family, and your life goals. You may even take help from a financial professional. It will help you to clarify any doubts about what is an investment meaning for you and identify the suitable options. You want to think about investment diversification. Build a diversified financial portfolio according to your investment objectives by putting your funds in different instruments for maintaining the right balance between risk and return. Also, when thinking about what an investment is and where to invest, consider giving priority to those instruments that offer security to your loved ones. It may include life insurance policies and other such instruments. You may consider the objectives for investment to generate appropriate returns from it. You also want to think about the time period. You should also know that it is difficult to answer what investment means for a particular individual without considering the time period. That is why, when considering an investment, know what time you have before turning your investments into cash. This is a crucial element that determines your investment objectives. Depending on your requirements, you may choose short term or long term funds. And of course, critically, periodic reassessment. Since the funds are influenced by market forces, 
it's imperative that you closely monitor them periodically. You may also consisting, consider readjusting if your portfolio is not generating good returns. Some other avenues for investment include real estate, right? And basically that involves buying and selling properties for profit. And also you can look at passive income from rent and income from these properties. So that is another option available to you. You also have insurance products. You can do life insurance. With a permanent life insurance policy, you pay into two parts, essentially the debt benefit and the cash value. The former grows your debt benefit with each monthly payment, but it's the latter that helps you to build wealth. Now it's important to have a look at what the policy says, what the contract document says, because that will indicate to you when cash value starts to build. With the cash value aspect, you can grow your wealth each month and build savings over the years. And when you want to tap into the money you've accumulated, you can do so by withdrawing it while you're still alive. The average permanent life insurance policy allows to grow your cash value by about 68% annually. That's significant compared to the standard 2% in a typical savings account regional. So you're getting more growth and even more money to play with it later in life. Let's talk about the stock market. What is the stock market? The stock market broadly refers to a collection of exchanges and other venues where the buying, selling, and issuance of shares of publicly held companies take place. Such financial activities are considered through institutional formal exchanges, whether physical or electronic, or via over-the-counter marketplaces that operate on the defined set of regulations. While both the term stock market and stock exchange are often used interchangeably, the latter term generally complies with a subset of the former. If one trades on the stock market, it means that they buy or sell shares on one or more of the stock exchanges that are part of the overall stock market. A given country or region may have one or more exchanges comprising their stock market. The leading U.S. stock exchanges include the New York Exchange and the NASDAQ. These leading national exchanges, along with several other exchanges operating in the country, form the stock market of the United States. An equity market is a market that shares, which shares of companies are issued and traded, right? Either through exchanges or over-the-counter markets. It's also known as the stock market, as I mentioned before. It gives companies access to capital to grow their business and invest as a place or a piece of ownership in the company with the potential to realize gains in their investment based on the company's future performance. And um, we have a number of exchanges, as you know, across the world. We've got New York Exchange. We've got an exchange in Jamaica. We've also got an exchange regionally. Um, quite a few have got the Eastern Caribbean Securities Exchange. And not mentioned here is also the Barbados Stock Exchange. As we said, equity markets are a meeting place or point for buyers and sellers of stock. The securities traded in the equity market can be public stocks, which are those listed on the stock exchange or privately traded stocks. Often, private stocks are traded through dealers, which is the definition of the over-the-counter market. While countries or well, companies are born, they're private companies, and after a certain time, they go through an initial public offering, which is a process that turns them into public companies traded on the stock exchange. Private stocks operate slightly differently as they only offer to employees or certain investors. Companies list their stock in an exchange as a way to obtain capital to grow their business. An equity market is a form of equity financing in which a company gives up a certain percentage of ownership in exchange for capital. That capital is then used for a variety of business needs. Equity financing is the opposite of debt financing, which utilizes loans and other forms of borrowing to obtain So, how to create wealth with stock? One of the first strategies to buy and hold. There's a common saying among long-term investments. Time in the market beats time in the market. What does that mean? In short, one common way to make money in stocks is by adopting a buy and hold strategy, where you hold stocks or other securities for a long period of time instead of engaging in frequent buying and selling, i.e. trading. You, want to, you can also opt for funds over individual stocks. In other words, a basket of stock as opposed to individual stocks. Seasoned investors know that a time-tested investment practice called diversification is key to reducing risk and potentially boosting returns over time. Think of it as the investing equivalent of not putting all your eggs in one basket. Although most investors gravitate towards two investment types, individual stock, stock funds, 
such as mutual funds or exchange traded funds, experts typically recommend the latter to maximize your diversification. While you can buy an array of individual stocks to emulate the diversification you find automatically in funds, it can take time, a fair amount of investing savvy, and a sizable cash commitment to do so successfully. An individual share of a single stock, for instance, can cost hundreds of, do hundreds of dollars. Funds, on the other hand, let you buy exposure to hundreds or thousands of individual investments with a single share. While everyone wants to throw all their money into the next Apple or Tesla, the simple fact is that most investors, including professionals, don't have a strong track record of predicting which companies will deliver outsized returns. That's why experts recommend most people invest in funds that passively track major indices like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. Reinvest your, your dividends. Many businesses pay their shareholders a dividend, a periodic payment based on their earnings. While the small amounts you get paid in dividends may seem negligible, especially when you first start investing, they're responsible for a large portion of the stock market's historical growth. From September 1921 to September 2021, the S&P 500 saw annual, average annual returns of 6.7%. When dividends were reinvested, however, that percentage jumped to almost 11%. That's because each dividend you reinvest buys you more shares, which helps your earnings compound even faster. That enhanced compounding is why many financial advisors recommend long-term investors reinvest their dividends rather than spending them when they receive the payments. Most brokerage companies give you the option to reinvest your dividend automatically by signing up for a dividend reinvestment program trip. And you need to choose the right investment account. Though the specific investment you pick are undeniably important in your long-term investment success, the account you choose to hold them in can be crucial depending on your tax environment. So you need to have a conversation with your financial professional in terms of, you know, is this particular account going to attract any sort of um, tax liability that I need to be aware of? So those are something that you need to Let's talk about bonds. Bonds are a fixed income debt instrument that basically amounts to a loan from an investor to a company or government agency. A bond is similar to an IOU and includes details about investment rates, the terms, and the payment dates. The borrower agrees to pay back the loan on a particular date in the future and make coupon payments throughout the life of the loan once or twice a year. How do bonds work? Companies or governments issue bonds when they want to raise money, such as to refinance debt, finance new projects, or maintain operations. It basically a loan. So when investors buy a bond, they are lending money to the company or government that issued it. Each bond comes with a maturity date and an interest payment term. The interest payment is generally referred to as the coupon. And longer term bonds usually pay higher coupons due to the increased length of the lending commitment. So here we have a graphic here that talks about the differences between bonds. And essentially we're basically talking about stocks which are an equity instrument carrying an ownership interest. They provide you with dividends. There's no guarantee of a return with stocks. So you're playing the market and there's risk. And you also sometimes get benefit and um, voting rights in the company, voting rights in the company. With bonds, they're debt instrument with a promise to pay back the money with interest. You do get um, interest and there's a guarantee that you get a return. If that does not work out, um, you have a preferential place in terms of any um, winding up of the company. So the difference is between saving and investment. Essentially, the purpose. Saving is usually for short-term financial goals, while investment is for longer-term financial goals. Risk. Savings is low risk, while investing comes with a higher risk. Return. Savings generates lower returns, while investing generates potentially higher returns. And in terms of liquidity, savings is liquid, while investment is, is less liquid. It takes a little bit of time to convert your investment back to cash if you need to. So how to decide whether to save or invest? You need to identify your financial goals and your time horizon. When do I need the money for? What am I saving for? Then you need to determine your risk tolerance. You know, do I want to go for the big returns and have a little higher risk? Or, you know, I'm getting close to retirement, I'm gonna need my cash. You need to then determine your risk tolerance. So you may decide for safer things as you are 
coming closer to say retirement and so on. And you need to consider the liquidity of your funds. How do I get access to it? And most importantly, consult a financial advisor to create a plan. So in terms of takeaways, savings and investment are both important financial concepts that can help you achieve your financial goals. Budgeting is an important, budgeting is an important tool to achieve your goals. And understanding the difference between these two concepts and how to use them effectively can help you build wealth and achieve financial security. Now, most importantly, the balance that you strike between the two is dependent on your time horizon and your risk tolerance. In truth, you need both savings and a diversified investment portfolio in order to maximize your wealth. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so very much, Lawrence. You gave us a mouthful. Our theme is TLC, Talk, Learn, Commit. And I really do think, well, I can speak for myself. I learned quite a bit. Savings, investing, they are important aspects of our financial journey. And we really do need to ensure that we understand the difference. So thank you so much, Lawrence. You gave us a mouthful and I really appreciate it. We are going to open the floor for questions. If there are any questions, what we are going to do, you raise your hand and we will then allow you to ask your question or you can put it in the chat. And um, while we're waiting on questions, I want to ask you a question, Lawrence. Sure. You spoke about um, savings and investing in particular, where you spoke about the different types of the different ways we can invest. I would like you to speak a little bit about risk and reward, because investing sounds really, really exciting. But what's the link between risk and reward? Well, the truth of the matter is um, a lot of times people think about investment and as you say, um, perhaps the, con the conversation about um, the reward aspect of it isn't, isn't particularly clear. The truth of the matter is the more of a return that you expect to get, you can also find a direct correlation between the amount of risk that you're going to expect to expose yourself to. So you want to really do your homework in terms of what it is that you want to invest in, um, understand the totality of the proposal, understand what it is that you're getting into, what are the various factors that affect, first of all, how I put my money in and how do I get it out, right? And typically what happens is when you have situations where, you know, the person is offering you a very good rate of return, or, you know, you're looking at this particular bond and it's really cheap to get, um, but they're going to be paying you a huge amount of money at the end of it. I mean, whenever you have situations where you're getting a return that's outside or, you know, considered to be too good to be true or very, very good, at that particular point in time, you need to go and do, okay, have I done my corrections? Have I looked at all the aspects here? And having done that, have I really, uh, am I happy? And am I prepared to take that risk? Because every time you're investing, you're doing a little amount of risk depending on the circumstances. So you want to be sure that you can properly quantify it and make an informed decision in terms of whether or not that's something that you want. And that's all, that was the case for every sort of investment that, that you want to be involved in. There is going to be an element of risk and you want to be sure that you properly quantify it. Thank you so much. Very well said. And what we have to remember as well is everybody has a different risk tolerance. So my risk tolerance might not be yours, but exactly. we have to remember that along with risk comes reward. So yeah. you have to find the, the happy balance. We have a question in the chat from Shani Daniel. She says, I have a question in terms of investing in Antigua and Barbuda. What are some good investments? Well, the truth of the matter is um, we have to look beyond our shores in terms of um, investment. Um, to have a, a good idea as to what is fully available to us. Um, so within the Antiguan economy, of course, there are people who invest in real estate and we're fully familiar with those. You buy a property, you fix it up, you sell it, or you buy a property and you get passive income from it, rental income, people are familiar with that. We have people who invest in um, cars, but cars in and of itself would be a difficult proposition because the moment you drive 
cars off the lot, you're already depreciated by 20%. But if it is that you're thinking about a car rental agency or something like that, then what you're looking at is the income streams from renting the car and you're basically running a business. So you need to think about those things. Those are investments. And of course, in any sort of business decision, you're going to look at what are the inputs that I need? What are some of the expenses that are gonna happen in order to determine what sort of profit am I really going to make on it, right? We can look a bit further afield. Um, there are a number of stock exchanges that are available to us. The Eastern Caribbean Securities Exchange um, is available. There, um, there are bonds and stocks available for sale there that you can look at, um, investments there. And also in Barbados Stock Exchange, I've utilized myself. Um, you can do that as well. Um, so there are opportunities there that, um, that you can look at. And I did speak about um, insurance policies as well. Um, a lot of people don't think about insurance policies as an investment, but they can be. Um, you take out a whole life insurance policy. Again, you will be looking carefully at what is the arrangement. Now, a lot of us have interacted with, um, with life insurance um, sellers, and um, you know they're very good at what they do, and you need to be, you need to make sure that you understand the contract fully. And that, of course, would be given to you, and you need to understand what the conditions are so you have an understanding as to what exactly do I get at the end of this particular contract? When does it mature? Is there any cash surrender value? When does that kick in? What amounts am I expected to get? So those are the questions that you need to ask in order to determine whether or not that investment would be right for you. So those are some of the things, some of the investments that you can find both here and regionally. Thank you so much. All right, Lawrence, I just want to thank you so much. You have given us so many snippets for us to go and nibble on. And I encourage everyone, this is only a short session, but it's to open your mind as to what's there. You have to now go and do, do the work. You have to go and learn. So find out about stocks, bonds, investments, savings, and apply them to your financial life. <clears throat> So thank you so much. This is, we're coming to the end of this session. We've had to make a, a slight change. As you know, we had a bit of a technical um, issue early on. So instead of going to the environmental wellness um, session, which is the next session, according to the agenda, we are going to go to the other session, which speaks about dropping your money baggage. So please go to that session. However, because we've had to make the changes, I will ask you to, when you leave this session, just refresh your, your browser and you will see the updated um, session for you to enter. So thank you so much. And I will see you in the next session. Thanks again, Lawrence. Thank you.